so i can share this powerpoint later on so let's uh, thank you very much all for joining we are expecting at least 50 doctors today anyway so meanwhile we'll start <clears throat> am, am i audible right and visible the powerpoint well yes or no yes. yeah everything is clear right yes wonderful wonderful so let's start as you know i'm going very quickly to this this is medical mcq for all this is our all expertise we are providing the prometric 1000 mcq books right as well as uh, we provide the ebooks as well recently we launched ebook as well so uh, that would be great right so if you are interested you can order it online anyway so prometric 1000 mcq book plus uh, these things <clears throat> So one second. <clears throat> Great. So that was fun. Right. So this is what Prometric 1000 MCQ book, as I told you. And there is an ebook. We have live daily online coachings. It's a live lecture, not recorded. So someone thought that it's recorded. It's not recorded. It is live like we are conducting right away. So you have all the liberty to ask the questions. We have WhatsApp subscription. We have Oman Viva coaching and subscriptions as well. We data flow services. We also provide Dr. Anjali is in our team who is based at Dubai. So anyone wants any help, feel free to call Anjali. We are going to share her number as well. We have one short short package. Those for second or third trial. I mean, this is the final trial, especially third trial. They can join the short short. Uh, get the information from our team or me and uh, those who are already using and not using our mobile application on android and iphone i request you download the things excellently prepared and uh, created recent uh, this mobile application for android and iphone so uh, whatever the subscription here you are using it is absolutely a free access to you so just try to use it it you just need to download from uh, either uh, uh, play store or from iphone application that's all so this is another thing uh right myself is dr munjal pande i am basically trained in hematology oncology and bone marrow transplant fellow and uh, mm. this is the thing so i have almost more than 20 years of clinical experience with coaching of more than 10 years so this is dr arti who is a consultant pediatrician taking regular lectures on pediatrics every day live classes she is a gold medalist and she is a uh, walking in one of the nearby hospital to my city. She is a medi, she is a internal medicine, many uh, quite popular coach as well, right? So she is internal medicine and taking emergency and cardiology uh, lectures. This is uh, Dr. Shika. She is a consultant gynecologist. One another good news I would like to announce is that we are shortly coming up with the exclusive course for gynecologist. Exclusive. What we are right now doing is for physician, family physician, a general physicians, internal medicine. But now this lady in our team will coming up with a good course. Probably she also shifting to Dubai next month. So any help in gynecology, feel free to contact her. She is quite cooperative lady, Dr. Shikha Garg. She is in my team. She is taking regular lectures and she also will going to help you soon. This is Dr. Ankit, who is a gastroenterologist and he is also taking a nice lectures and uh, we have a quite big team sagar is there pallavi is there so there are a lot of people this is our contact number this is recently we published a book in january 2024 so this is a nicely updated uh, book of uh, 1000 questions more than 1000 questions with answers and explanation updated in january 24 so those who wants that you can uh, contact us that's it and uh, this is the one of the biggest uh, this news in this 2024, we uh, announced company of 50%, 50 percent, five zero fifty percent discount on the coaching. Right earlier, it is little difficult for people to join because of the high cost. So 40 hours, right? So far we did it in 500 USD, but now it is in a 250 USD, so almost the half the cost. So now it's very easily accessible and approachable, and uh, you can join the coaching as well. As I told you, for data flow, Anjali is there, right? So Anjali is based at Dubai. So you can approach Dr. Anjali on this number. I will share her numbers. It's mentioned here, WhatsApp and mobile, myself and Pallavi is also there to guide you and support you. So let's start the main things.
right so everyone should get ready with the pen and paper today believe me we'll we'll going to do excellent questions right uh with the explanations and lots of mcqs will cover right dot directly with the exams that's it no here and there right so let's start the first questions in front of your screen fortunately today's questions are little not very big big scenario but but it it's worth it's a uh, it's worth to understand all patient with hiv and tb that is tuberculosis co infections what will you going to do right are you going to start art let me tell you what is art art is anti retroviral therapies art and att is anti tuberculous treatment right so just to make you understand what is art what is att so patient who has hiv now co infection with tb so hiv patients develop now tb so he has hiv plus tb what you do start att first initiate a so you start att first you then you initiate art that is anti retroviral therapy as early as possible between 2 to 2 weeks to 2 months another option start art anti retroviral because it's hiv so it's more important then att third is you start at the same time you start att you start art both at the same time or else you can do first you finish the course of att anti tubercular treatment and then you start the art means around 6 months to 9 months whatever the recommendation you finish it off and then you start the art few other questions which is also uh, like around 10 questions very frequently asked in exam which is very very important for you to know what cd4 cell count you start the art all pregnant and breastfeeding women what count to start anti retroviral therapy this all are exam questions i triage i did whole the week i did lots of hard work in creating this so be more sincere name art anti retroviral therapy not safe in pregnancy is a very high yield question side effect of various art frequently asked questions indication of lses low seg segment cesarean section so indication of cesarean in hiv positive pregnant lady how many drug starts in patient with hiv and what percentage baby get hiv from hiv infected pregnant lady these are the few absolutely high yield question there are hundreds of questions but these are the so high yield i reviewed lots of papers and then compiled all the questions which i can finish it off in next couple of hours yes so this house is open for all so any volunteer if wants to answer these things i would be happy some volunteers will get ready yes bahar toprak you start what will you do if you have a patient of hiv tb co infection mm. Me? One by one, you can. I have post no idea. No idea. Fair enough. So, anyone next? Anyone next? C. C. What is C? Start ATT. That is anti-tubercular treatment and ART at the same time. What's your name? I'm Dr. Rehana. Dr. Rehana. So, so how how is your experience? I mean, are you going to treat the uh, HIV or tuberculosis patient, doctor, or not yet? Uh, no, but because I have read. Uh, in the book that uh, hiv patients are more prone to acquire uh, tuberculosis wonderful so then then a normal person okay great because of the immunity is down right and uh, yeah, cd4 I mean, uh, cd8 yeah so is there any guideline say for example why not att first and initiate art as early as possible between 2 weeks to 2 months yes yeah, sir option because patient is already with hiv or maybe he is taking medicine already okay but patient is i mean it's not mentioned but it is not taking that is why in the option they mention start att first then yeah, initiate yeah. art as early as possible blah 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 so your answer is bit close but but still still there is a criteria so is there any criteria to start at the same time let me ask you the same question so if the answer is c is correct say for example right so there is one mm. one more thing dr rehana you need to add in this uh, things so would you like to add anything any sentence in this where we can start the is there any criteria of cd4 or c right cd4 or cd8 count is there any dependency of numbers is is this numbers are important in hiv or not what is the normal cd4 cd8 ratio sorry sorry C4 ratio. Hello. Yes, yes. Open for all. Anyone C can speak. C4 ratios will be 800 to 1200. 
So eight hundred two thousand is a normal ratio. Okay, fine. So 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 what at what what level it is dangerous, or what level it is like a more chances of getting uh, this infections, especially we uh, heard and listen and read for years and years opportunistic infections. Yeah, Have you heard uh, of it? Yeah, uh, for TB is less than five hundred and uh, toxoplasmosis less than two hundred count. So less and, than uh, five hundred, less than two hundred, and yeah, less than fifty. Fifty. Fifty is a uh, mycobacterium avium complex will be less than fifty. CD4 okay. Complex. Okay. So everyone homework is what? First of all, this is all debate discussing platform. So what is the CD four and CD eight count? Though it is a correct number, it's perfect. She told perfect. But you need to know. You need to know. It's a simple thing. It's nothing. Something uh, critical numbers, right? You need to know, right? So five hundred less than. Anything more than 500 is not worrying some in HIV patient. Number one, less than 500 to 200 is low. 200 to 50 is very low, and less than 50 is absolutely. You can say uh, low risk, intermediate risk, high risk in general. Just for general understanding. So anything less than 50, right? Right. The cut of many guidelines says 200. Anything less than 200 is very very high risk in HIV patient. So, so they may get an opportunistic infection, PCP, pneumonia, viral, bacterial, fungal, right? <clears throat> Pneumocystis carinis, this all. So, as Dr. Rehana told correctly, start ATT and ART at same time, but there is one catch and clue, especially when the counts are low. But if the counts, say for example, same scenario, if if the CD4, CD8 count is 500, what's the answer, Dr. Rehana? And CD48 uh, ratio is less than 50, what's the answer? And then A. Then A. So if the counts are good, here not mentioned CD24 means we considered it as a normal. If something is not mentioned in the scenario in exam, say for example, blood pressure here not mentioned, temperature not mentioned, means vital is stable for this patient. Something not mentioned in the scenario means normal. Considered in that way, I'm sharing my experience, right? So, so, so that's it. So considered this is a normal count or at least more than 500. Do you think, Dr. Rehana, your answer would be changing or would be the same? No, it will be changed. If the count is be... mentioned, then it will be changed. Right. But it not mentioned means normal, considered in that way. Yeah. For yeah. your knowledge, right? Not mentioned means normal. <clears throat> right. So now normal, CD4, CD8. Right. It's mentioned. Okay. I'll add one more link. The patient CD4 count is 600. CD4 count, 48 count ratio is 600. Now what's the answer? Yes. What's the answer? P. Uh, yeah. So basically, now see, let's go first to the one question, then we'll discuss more. Start ATT, that is anti tubercular treatment. This is a normal ratio or more than 500 counts we are dealing with, right? Not mentioned means normal or close to normal. So start the ATT first, anti tuberculous treatment first. Initiate the ART as early as possible. What do you mean by as early as? Two to two, two weeks, two months in between. Once patient get better, symptomatic improvement, see the patient, right? Max two months, but because in two months you get any AKT effect will be there. Anti AKT or ATT, same thing. Anti cox treatment or anti tuberculous treatment, right? So when you give the ATT or AKT to any patient, they have much symptomatic improvement. They have good clinical response. They have radiological little response. Probably the sputum becomes negative. It's a good time to start now, right? So, so ATT would start first and then within two months max, you can start the ART, antiretroviral therapy. Now, other clue for patient with CD4 below 50, Dr. Rehana. Hmm. For patient with CD4 below 50, ART might be initiated simultaneously. As you rightly mentioned, right? That, okay, sir, I would like to start both the things at the same time, especially yeah. when the counts are very low, right? At that time, both are important. HIV is important, TB is also important, yeah. right? So if you treat that, uh, I mean, tuberculosis, but HIV counts are low, he may die of some another pneumonia, right? So you want to start both the things at the same time. When? When the CD4-8 count is very, very low, right? So more okay. than 200, if in the exam scenario, the answer is ATT, ATT first, anti-tuberculosis first, and then start the ART. ART. So this is the answer of this question. Dr. Rehana, any comment on 127? Sorry to ask you. 
Are you okay, comfortable? Mm -hmm. If I ask you the question, um, sir, I have to read it. <laughs> no problem. No problem. So yeah, try you can it. ask. Great, wonderful. You will not forget. That is for sure. If you if I ask you, you will not forget in exam. Okay. Yes. Any expert in HIV wants to try this one two seven one by one? I can't. I mean, accommodate all at the same time. Hello, Anyone? Sir. Yes. Uh, sixth question: How many drugs started in the patients with HIV? First, we'll go one by one. What CD four cell count you start the ART? राइट in terms of number cd4 cd8 numbers if it is more than 200 you can start any time is that clear right yes less than 50 anyway you have to start both the things at the same time as we discussed with dr rayana right but yes. when the counts are more once you start the att you can start the art right so these are the safe number where you can start second number all pregnant and breastfeeding women when right when at what count you start the art at what count you start the art the answer is the same answer is the same right third thing name the art not safe in pregnancy any idea doctor anyone anyone name the drug name the drug they may probably give you a long term life scenario sorry streptomycin no no art art I mean we are talking about art not all antibiotics not safe in pregnancy in terms of art i mean which art anti retroviral therapy is not safe in pregnancy because when the female is pregnant who is hiv positive you have to treat the right right for the mother as well as it will reduces the risk of infections from mother to baby that is a seven questions right so name the art not the antibiotic name the art not safe in pregnancy so let's discuss all the questions one by one so these are the few adverse effect of yeah you remember i will share the power point don't worry if you miss something nothing to worry just concentrate what i am saying so these are the absolutely 10 questions in exam they may ask you in a different different way i'll compile it in a one slide only zudovudin the most important side effect you need to know is anemia so before starting the zudovudin right to a hiv patient as a part of art right you must cross check the cbc right so baseline cbc should be there if anemia you cannot give the zudovudin because it will further worsen the anemia then stavudin and didanosine this is a peripheral neuropathy and pancreatitis abecavir hypersensitivity and steven johnson syndrome or reactions abecavir proteasome or protease inhibitor hyperlipidemia and hyperglycemia so must remember this is frequently asked exam right if patient is diabetic patient is uncontrolled diabetes and they are asking long scenario and they give you five drugs and tell you which group of the drug is avoided in this patient protease inhibitor should be avoided because it worsen the hyperglycemia or diabetes and dyslipidemia as well indinavir right it is called the nephrolithiasis so can be avoided in a renal failure and nephrolithiasis patient tonofovir again a bad kidney you better avoid the tonofovir so this is you need to mug up there is no logic here right so no concept but you need to mug up you need to remember this specific side effects right so i will share this later on so you just keep with you in your record so this is all various adverse side effect of hiv they what ask usually in all hard dha moh all kmle right so you cannot afford to miss this all side effects which is very very important right so this is all i told you already now the next question which hiv drug or art drug should be avoided in pregnancy remember the name ifa virens ifa virens ifa virens so this is the drug you go and read now little art anti retroviral therapy if you not never ever you read it you just spend little time half an hour one hour right because hiv is a global burden hiv is a global problem hiv is a uh, bad disease so far unfortunately there is no cure for hiv though because of art the quality and quantity of the life of the patient improved drastically but still if you ask me sir is it curable 
or the cure is there so far no right so you need to remember each and everything if a variance right so this is a drug which is not safe in pregnancy hiv medication for infant zidovudin during the delivery and 6 weeks after to prevent the infection so which is a base drug in infant zidovudin right the side effect of zidovudin is a anemia so you must remember you should avoid in anemia patient pregnant hiv patients anti retroviral throughout entire pregnancy irrespective of count so any pregnant patient comes to you and hiv positive in antenatal checkup right with cbc sgpt create urine blah blah you do all antenatal screening and if hiv hbs age is a part of screening in first or early second trimester so if it is present irrespective of count irrespective of trimester irrespective of anything you must start the hiv as soon as possible in pregnant woman forget about cd4 forget about cd8 forget about first trimester 8 weeks 10 week 12 week 14 week whatever the weeks you must start this is a guideline indication for cesarean section in hiv mother viral load greater than 1000 right or cd4 cell count less than 350 right it's a indication for cesarean section right you must do the cesarean section so this is a high yield question in exam and without any intervention the risk of transmission of the hiv from infected pregnant woman to her children is around 20 to 45% close to 50% close to 50% and you want to avoid it anyone can anyone tell me if mother has hiv positive and baby pregnant lady right how, how you prevent the infection vertical we call as a vertical transmission so can anyone have general idea how we minimize i mean we may prevent we may not prevent but what are the what are the what are the ways by which we can prevent the infection from mother to baby hiv positive mother pregnant you want to prevent the infection to baby tell me anyone simple na no? you start art anti retroviral therapy you need to start this is the biggest way of preventing the infection from mother to baby larger time you uncover the hiv part increases the risk of transmission to the baby and it is you can see 20 to 45% it's quite a big number around close to right every alternate or every other 50% of the babies will uh, uh, will have a hiv positive right are you giving the breastfeed feeding to hiv positive mother to a baby after delivery yes or no no is indicated or contraindicated yes no. yes no. yes sir so you no, conti no. so continue breastfeeding or don't you don't continue no no no, no. yes sir continue continue no. so depending on situ sometimes the baby is positive you can give the breastfeeding if if the baby is negative and the mother is positive you don't give so before even the breastfeeding you have to check the serology if the baby is positive then you can do breastfeeding it's not you are contraindicated mm -hmm. can you find some literature afterwards sir for this statement and post it in the group are you okay with the homework yes yes or no if you are not it's fine i don't yes, mind sir. wonderful so one person out of 50 people take responsibility if mother hiv positive baby is hiv positive breastfeeding is given or not baby is negative breastfeeding is given or not or whether baby is hiv positive or negative breastfeeding is given or not so can anyone tell me what are the absolute contraindication of breastfeeding absolute contraindication where you must not give if mother active tb mother is having excellent wonderful correct answer Then, active tb to the mother you can infection of the areola if you have it you don't give it areola or uh, yeah herpes infection herpes infection of areola or nipple you can say nipple right. areola complex anyway second then hiv positive uh, actually it's not indicated you cannot give it yes so these are the three contraindication which called as a relative there are long list of indirectly mother is not well some infection pneumonia blah blah there are hundreds of indication but absolute contraindication is rightly mentioned active tuberculosis number one you cannot give nipple areola complex herpes uh, infections you cannot give it because you can transmit it to the baby and third thing is a hiv positive mother lactation is avoided so this is again a question in exam right in other way so we covered lots of questions with hiv and att 
everything everybody is okay yes going well yes sir wonderful 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 right so this is all the questions we covered 1 to 7 we covered even more than 1 to 7 so you need to remember you need to practice in that way you don't need to mug up the questions one question one answer they can ask you anything from this list now you are much better than before so now whatever they ask you can easily answer but still i want and wish you to go for the hiv chapter you never ever avoid hiv it is a very very common question in exam 100% they will ask something from it right so we try to cover most of the things if something is missing you can again read it and discuss and post the homework in the group by the end of the evening second questions very important one out of one is a good score one out of zero zero out of one is not good score so check your score don't tell me but check your score if it is less than 15 per 50% five zero it's not good score need to push bit yourself hard before exam primary jogran syndrome which antibodies detected fortunately today's questions are small small but it is very important so i want someone to answer first of all what is jogran syndrome second thing options anti ds dna where it is positive anti gp220 where it is positive anti histone antibody where it is positive anti jo1 where it is positive anti la ssb antibody where is it is positive so first let me start with the primary jogran syndrome right what they are asking in primary is jogran syndrome which antibodies detected so now select from a to e your time starts yes anyone dr jinis ap any comment yes nilam option e sir option e great wonderful let's see i mean what other great thanks for your comment huh? yes nilam yes sir any random guess don't worry because if the same question will come you have to answer little bit isn't it what do you think you need to post something na so select one yes azil azil yes sir uh, sir actually i am not sure about what i answered i know anti eds uh, dna is uh, sensitive for uh, sle okay. and anti histamine antibodies is uh, for the drug induced uh, sle great wonderful and both are easy. correct perfect both are correct yes now sir rule out so you rule out a and c so now yes. b anti gp210 uh, i don't know about it sir okay and anti jo anti jo1 what you answered i, think, I guess yes sir uh, i answered it to the anti jo1 anti jo1 i think it's inflammatory myopathy okay great so so see doctor told already so it is also gone anti jo is gone so correct answer is anti la ssb antibody <clears throat> right great so i think dr jinis uh, answered well uh, initially dr jinis would you like to comment on all other antibodies dr jinis because in exam they can ask any anything they cannot ask and you only jogran sorry anti ds dna is sle okay on antibody i think uh, it's crust syndrome i don't know i'm not sure about it fair enough no problem you go ahead whatever you know that is the learning platform that's mine i'm happy at and, least and you are jo, and the jo1 is uh, inflammatory myopathy and okay. the last one is jogran syndrome i don't know answer b sir okay fair enough answer no b is for uh, primary biliary cholangitis sir great wonderful so we'll see lots of antibodies today right because this is the subject where we usually avoid what do you think azil we avoid right such antibodies and all this looks toxic what do yes, you think sir. what's your what's your experience azil am i right because yes, i was sir. doing the same thing when i was like bit a initial practice i try to avoid i i refer to a rheumatologist <laughs> easiest way refer to rheumatologist right but we need to know basic things isn't it right it's not something yes azil again what's the jogran what do you understand by jogran azil uh sir we we will have dry, there will be dry eyes and dry mouth 
great wonderful so this is let's go little literature because i mean don't take it that there is we are close to 45 people in the class so few people may not know what is jogran we heard we listen we read but we exactly don't know so jogran is a disorder of your immune system identified by its two most common symptoms which are the two most common dry eye dry mouth so lacrimal gland is gone because of autoimmune there is no more tear and there is no more <clears throat> saliva so it's a dry mouth dry eye that's it the condition often accompanies other immune disorders such as rheumatoid arthritis lupus in jogran the mucous membranes and moisture secreting glands of the eyes and mouth are usually affected first resulting in decreased tears decreased saliva is that clear so jogran is nothing simply your dry eye and dry mouth that's it both the glands which is secreting the fluid in the eyes making tears and uh, saliva mouth salivary gland gets exhausted uh, right won't produce more this fluid and this is the jograns and these are the two common things right so let's let's go it's a long exhaustive list right so anti gang right this is an auto antibody which antibody do so here the answer is e right jograns you get anti la and ssb auto antibody so mug up remember right they may ask you anything in this exam anti nuclear antibody ana that is anti nuclear antibody in condition where associated include following right so uh, anti centromere antibody limited cutaneous systemic sclerosis or crest syndrome cre crest syndrome anti centromere antibody so remember anti centromere antibody if they ask talk about something either you remember there is a, a crest syndrome primary biliary cirrhosis or proximal scleroderma right so scleroderma sclerosis or primary biliary cirrhosis pbc anti dsd dna as you rightly said systemic lupus erythematous sle anti gp220 is primary biliary cirrhosis already doctor told some doctors i forget the name but he rightly said primary biliary cirrhosis anti histon is again rightly told by azil sle or drug induced sle lupus erythematous drug induced anti histon anti jo as rightly doctor said polymyositis and dermatomyositis anti jo1 anti la ssb antibody primary is jograns as we discussed right these are the little rel again what you need to know anti rnp mixed connective tissue disorder mctd mctd mixed connective tissue disorder anti rnp anti ro and ssa antibody again sle again a uh, heart block this is very important i just seen one question asked recently in usmle exam neonatal heart block so patient presented with a neonatal heart block so baby born blah 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 long scenario right ecg was done there is a heart block which auto antibody associated with it anti ro ssa anti ro ssa this is question in exam you can expect in hard exam anti sm sle anti sp100 primary biliary cirrhosis anti topo isomerase scleroderma right so these are the few antibodies i will share the things with you so you just go through it list but just try to remember the common 8 10 right they very frequently asked in the exam very frequently asked pnk right pnk very hot favorite question in exam pnk right that is a wagner granulomatosis microscopic polyangiitis chuck strauss syndrome and uh, rheumatoid arthritis is ra that's it so these are the few list exhaustive list anyway but still you need to remember the few which is common like sle you cannot miss polymyositis you cannot miss right you cannot miss the primary biliary cirrhosis right you cannot miss the crest syndrome or scleroderma so five six commons you try to remember it it will definitely come in exam is that clear to you going well yes or no yes sir. yes wonderful wonderful you are enjoying so far yes wonderful 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 yes. wonderful, wonderful two out of two is a excellent score let's move to the third questions the beauty of today's lecture is that that questions are little small lines so you are happy right when the scenarios are 10 lines most of the doctors don't happy oh it's a long 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 scenario sir is taking every time so this is brainstorming the scenario is small but lots of learning today lung cancer targeted therapy for egfr exon 19 mutation is it imatinib is it pertuzumab is it rituximab is it trastuzumab is it osimaritinib sir what is this egfr exon egfr egfr stands for epidermal growth factor receptor exon 19 mutation so let me little elaborate this sentence so you have a patient who has a lung cancer 
he was evaluated and on the tissue biopsy right the we did some test and in one of the test which comes as egfr 19 mutation exon positive there is one drug available which acts again this mutation right let me give you the clue imatinib it's not the answer why because imatinib is a drug of choice in cml have you know this cml chronic myeloid leukemia yes or no everyone yes, yes or no so chronic myeloid leukemia it is a tyrosine kinase inhibitor tki which acts again the bcr able gene oncogene bcr abl also little refresh of cml philadelphia chromosome. chromosome translocation of 9 and 22 if it is present you are going to give the drug in cml those who have either bcr able positive or philadelphia chromosome positive you are going to give the imatinib so this imatinib is a drug which acts against these things so which drug act again the exon 19 mutation out of this list that's it this is what the question is so you have a lung cancer patients you detected one test which positive egfr 19 little little tricky obviously it's oncology questions not a gp question but still i mean you need to know little medicine eh? because in exam they will not ask you what you knows they ask you what they wants to know <laughs> yes anyone volunteer any volunteer E. E. Who has given the answer E? Me. <laughs> yeah, G. Great. Wonderful. So, would you like to try, sir, all the questions where the imatinib is used? So, let me let me go to the literature. Right? Lung cancer. My very favorite topic, lung cancer. The good news is that next Sunday I'm taking hemat oncology exclusive class hemat oncology, right? No mock test, but it's like a mock test, but it's only related to hemat onc. So be present next time. All your hemat onc will be covered. So lung cancer quickly. We know for many years treatment option in lung cancer is surgery. We do the lobectomy. We'll cut the lung, right? We cut the half lung or upper lobectomy. It's a treatment. Second thing is a chemotherapy. We give IV intravenous chemotherapy. Third thing is a radiotherapy. These are the three conventional treatment. But the two treatment comes in the market in last 10 years. One is a targeted therapy in lung cancer. And another is immunotherapy for your knowledge. So now what happens when you do a biopsy of the lung cancer? There are two things. This is all exam questions. So don't take it lightly. This all exam. What I'm discussing is all exam. So there are three, two histology, non-small cell lung cancer and small cell lung cancer. Non-small cell lung occupies 80% of the lung cancers are non-small cell and 20% are the small cell. What includes in non-small cell? Number one is adenocarcinoma. You must know no, what includes under. Another is a squamous cell carcinoma and third thing is a large cell carcinoma. So these are three included in non-small cell. So this is small cell like Hodgkin's and non-Hodgkin's. Hodgkin's lymphoma, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Small cell, non-small cell. What includes in non-small cell? So if you have adenocarcinoma histology, squamous cell carcinoma, large cell carcinoma, it's a non-small cell. Out of these three, adenocarcinoma accounts for 50 to 70 percent, 20, 30 percent is called and very less person, less than 10 percent is a large cell. This is how I see being a medical oncologist in my day-to-day -day practice, right? So, adenocarcinoma is one of the most common cancer across the globe, right, in a lung cancer, <clears throat> right. Now, what's the difference, adeno and squamous, right. So, there are again a very common important things, right. Let me tell you because it's a, if they ask you the question in exam, which cancer is one of the most deadliest cancer in the body, high, fastest mortality, answer is lung cancer, remember. If they ask you the another question, which is the commonest cancer in female, breast cancer which is the deadliest cancer in female answer is lung cancer so common is different deadliest is different is that clear to everyone yes or no tell me at least yes or no yes sir. Yeah. wonderful so commonest is in female is a breast common if they ask you common and if they ask you what is the deadliest cancer in female then answer change from lung breast to lung right so it's a deadliest cancer right it is a very common cancer across the globe so you must know each and everything Right, so this is the basic histology. Here, what is the difference between a squamous and adeno? So adeno is usually peripherally situated. 
adeno because glands are peripheral alveolar gland are periphery squamous is in central squamous cell is in central so this is biggest difference right so usually radiologically if you do the ct scan and check right the adenocarcinoma is in ct scan located peripherally squamous cell centrally this is one locational things second thing which cancer present very fast squamous cell present early they present late adeno present late why late because in periphery nothing nothing obstructing to the bronchus nothing obstructing to the vessel nothing obstructing to the airway so they are present unfortunately the late that is a bad part squamous cell they present early why because there is airway obstruction there is a coughing there is a dyspnea there is a chest pain right there is a supia vena cava syndrome blah blah right so they present early why because obstruction is there right so this tumor grow large 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 when they in obstruct the bronchus then there will be a problem right so adenocarcinoma usually present late and those who have adenocarcinoma the here comes the picture there are few mutations it is called as a egfr right just remember it's not uh, your cup of tea honestly but it's very important uh, alk1 ros and pdl1 these are the four mutation we do every day in our practice because egfr if it is positive the drug called as osimaritinib osimaritinib is a drug given orally alk and ros there is a drug called as a crizotinib crizotinib and pdl1 positive there is a drug called as a pembrolizumab pembrolizumab so these are the latest advance in medical science in oncology right so this cancer can be controlled with simple oral one medication called as osimaritinib so we do all the mutations we do the targeted mutations and if it is positive here the question what is the questions what is the positive right so here it's a positive <clears throat> right so if we can see it here right here the positive is osimaritinib is the answer why because egfr mutation is positive so imatinib is mainly used drug for the cml pertuzumab and trastuzumab is used for the breast have you heard of hal2 her2 hal2 have you heard of hal2 yes or no hal2 receptor yes or no so if you have heard of hal2 receptor this hal2 right hal2 anti sorry Sorry, what it's you are saying? Breast cancer. Yeah, it's a breast cancer. Exactly, breast cancer, right? So, imatinib is used in chronic myeloid leukemia. Pertuzumab is used for the HER2 positive breast cancer. Trastuzumab is also used for the HER2 positive breast cancer. Rituximab is used for lymphoma, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. It is anti-CD20 positive antibody, right? So, if if in non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. right if it is say for example diffuse large d cell lymphoma is a type of non hodgkins lymphoma cd20 positive if you positive if you block the cd20 it will stop the growth of the cancer cell so rituximab is used for uh, this nhl non hodgkins and chronic lymphoblastic leukemia and few other conditions lymphoid malignancy where it is commonly used right and few other hematological condition also like autoimmune hemolytic anemia right and immune thrombocytopenic purpura also it's used so i'll cover in hemat oncology chapter but just keep in mind and osimaritinib is the drug of choice those who have exon 19 mutation positive in a lung cancer osimaritinib is a drug of choice and it improves the overall survival of the patient patient lives longer with this mutation and if you give the drug they will block the mutation and they will increases the quality and quantity of the life of the patient so you must know it right so this is what the question is is that clear to everyone yes or no yes sir yes sir got it so all five i covered overall with some basic understanding of lung cancer we have many things to discuss in oncology but we'll discuss in our separate dedicated lecture next questions in front of your screen 3 out of 3 is excellent score Which of the following prevent the cancer in patient with multiple first degree? Hala is requesting you to record this meeting locally. So, which of the following prevent cancer in patients with the multiple first degree relative with breast cancer? Options, right? So, they what's the question? Understand which of the following prevents the cancer in patient with multiple first degrees? 
a relatives with breast cancer so say for example lady has a cancer but lady's mother has a breast cancer lady's sister has a breast cancer lady's daughter has a breast cancer so one person who has a lots of breast cancer in their first degree relative what will going to help them right right or which of the following prevents the cancer from say mother has a cancer now how you prevent to the baby right mother is a 60 years or daughter is a 40 years now this 40 years daughter asking sir what i do supposed to do to prevent breast cancer so i advise you do dr braca you do patient braca testing you start aromatase inhibitor you do the dietary modification right so you can prevent the cancer you do her to testing so you can prevent the breast cancer or you do the erpr report and testing and you prevent the breast cancer so what will you do what will you advise to the patient to prevent the cancer who has a multiple first degree relative breast cancer yes dr n dr n sumi any comment any comment is a very common question it's a very global burden breast cancer is a global burden highest number of cancer across the globe is a breast cancer in female and second highest is a cervical cancer we'll discuss in next sunday but anyway just you need to know anyone open for all anyone कैंसर सो so do you think by doing the braca testing you are preventing the cancer yes yes so how do you prevent the so your braca test is positive say for example how now it's going to prevent the breast cancer in the daughter from mother hello uh, no i mean it only identification but if we can identify early Yeah, so so that is what I'm saying. See, this is what the matter of discussion. So say for example, you did a BRCA test. BRCA test. I'm telling you, the next day the report comes, sir, it is a positive. So doing the BRCA test now is positive. Now what what will you dis do? This is again a second exam question. Female who has a who has a breast cancer, the daughter coming and asking you for some reports. You did a BRCA test. Now BRCA test is positive. how you going to react with the braca positive what's your advice to the patients right or the daughter of the patient regarding the breast cancer you understand sir, my peri question periodic screening periodic what, screening uh, with daughter? what of daughter okay with what how you gonna this uh, screen the daughter this braca test wait a minute let this lady to finish yes madam so what you want to do braca is positive periodic screening you want to do so what what advice you give to the patient i am the patient i am asking okay doctor what i supposed to do periodic screening what's your answer hello sir i am thinking to test i, I think then screening. again this braca test for her also and this mammography and uh, this is how we screen the breast cancers yeah so 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 let me tell you or you tell me how you screen the breast cancer again a basic question first examination uh, periodic okay. examinations then uh, if it by is whom? needed ultrasound periodic, periodic examination by whom by patient or him herself or by doctor or both and we also advise a patient to see if there is any lump during bathing or like this this self examination Great. is wonderful. advised wonderful how frequently you advise This is all exam question. Sorry, huh? don't uh, take it otherwise. No, no, no. Self examination daily. No daily. Daily is not a good yeah, idea. Yeah, so, so let me. Yeah, yeah. No, no. We are. I mean, going out of the track. But anyway, it's a very important questions. Breast is. I don't want to die any female of breast cancer. 
it's a very preventable and early treatable and curable we have a separate session of breast cancer next week so there are three things breast self examination clinical breast examination and bilateral mammogram are you agreed with me this three things yes or no first of all so breast sir, self mm, mm, one minute sir if the mm -hmm. age is less than 40 then ultrasound will help or still we will go for mammogram i'll tell you i'll tell you doctor breast self examination is usually just for your knowledge you recommend all females right all females who is more than 20 plus it's nothing it's free now breast self examination means they have to check both the breast axilla and supraclavicular region lots of videos are available so those even you whatever the females are sitting in the class today 50 people right if the half you also know how to do the breast self examination lots of youtube's video available you go and check it you do it don't take it lightly breast cancer is one of the highest uh, incidence and prevalence across the globe in all the regions all the continent right so breast examination should be started so everybody in this class who is female deserve the breast self examination done once a month once a month guideline is once a month while you are bathing or you are i mean any position you can do it there are videos available so once a month you usually do it right after finishing your periods if you are menstruating female absolutely you do one week after because during menstruation there are lots of changes happens in the breast as well so once let the period finish after one week you fix the date right everybody has a different cycle so you decide what's your date start what's your stop after stopping seven days you can do the breast self examination so say say for example first of the april start and 7th april finished so every month 15th you can do the breast self examination for understanding right clinical breast examination can be done clinical uh, breast examination not that frequently clinical breast examination is examination by the doctors in guideline more than 40 years it is mentioned three monthly to six monthly right you go and check your breast but at least you do the breast self examination right between 20 to 40 40 is the cutoff line few guidelines across the globe say 40 mammogram indian guideline and other many guidelines right and us guideline 50 years right so 50 is the ideal age where the you have to start the mammogram right 50 to 75 exam question at what age you start what age you stop 75 plus you stop the mammogram it's fine right so mammogram should be done what frequently you need to do one to two year annually maximum every two years so 50 52 54 56 58 up to 75 you need to do bilateral mammogram not unilateral bilateral both breast breast cancer happen any side right or left both bilateral mammogram right so this is what the basic guideline for breast self-examination clinical and this again questions of the doctor i forget your name but the ultrasound or usg so usg plus mammogram goes together it is called as a memo sonogram. The name is memo sonogram. If you read the report, it's not just the mammogram. It's a memo plus sono combination. So mammogram means memo sonogram considered in that way. Is that clear? Yeah. Right. So it, it is never alone a mammogram. It's a memo sonogram. So okay. even if I mention this mammogram considered, it is memo sonogram. This is how it is done globally. Right. Is that clear? Yeah. So, so this is how it works so this is regarding the uh things right you should not miss it right so this is what about the things so now let's get back to the questions which so do you think that doing the BRCA will prevent the cancer from mother to baby yes it could make you more conscious okay more, so make uh, informative prevention okay so how how i'm just trying again sorry to understand so if some test, say for example, patient is a breast cancer positive and she is a 60 and daughter is 40. Now she is asking the same questions, right? How I prevent the breast cancer, right? And these are the options. So BRCA testing is simply remember doctor. BRCA is a one test. It's a genetic test, right? Breast cancer antigen 1 and 2 BRCA 1 and 2 we called it right it's a test it is done from the biopsy report or it is done from the slides and block we'll send every day to our patients right BRCA 1 and BRCA 2 right the result comes as like BRCA is positive or BRCA is negative so what is the interpretation 
If BRCA is negative, means it's a low risk. If BRCA is positive, means what? They have increased the risk of getting the cancer from yeah. mother to baby. Increased risk does not mean they will 100% will get the cancer. You got my point. Yeah. Wearing helmet, wearing helmet will provide you the safety against accident. That does not mean if I did not wear the helmet means 100% I have head injury. Is that correct? Yeah. Got it. So any gene which is present, the biggest, this, this test comes in the market in hype after Angelina Jolly. Have you heard of Angelina Jolly? If not, yeah. go and read it little. It's a Hollywood star lady. This lady yeah. has a strong history of breast cancer. She did the BRCA1 and 2. She has a BRCA1 and 2 positive. What she did, she removed both the breast. Prophylactic. It is called as a prophylactic mastectomy. She removed both the breast before cancer developed. And after that, she implanted the silicon prosthesis of the breast. Right? So, she, mm -hmm. she did the prophylactic. 99% of the people do the mastectomy after getting the cancer, not before getting the cancer. Got it. Sir, is it recommended or is it a self It's a personal choice. choice. It's a personal choice. It's a personal choice. It is not in the guideline. But BRCA1 and 2 increases the risk of getting the breast cancer around 50 to 70%. I need to also review the literature, but I read it. But it is not mandatory that you do go and remove both your breast. It's not mandatory. So in that yeah. case, you have two options. If you are worried like Angelina Jolly, you go and do remove both the breast. Right, so cancer Plus will not resources. happen. Got it. So this is one thing. Second thing is what? Say for example, and it is not an easy decision na, to remove both the breast without cancer. And that is also without cancer. So it's not a small decision for the female. So in that case, what you do? You do the regular mammosonogram every yearly just to check on the whether cancer develop or not. It is possible that you won't develop the cancer. You are following yourself till 75. You are a doctor. You are quite qualified, educated, brilliant, intelligent. So you do at 50 to 75. Every year you are going and mammogram and every time it's mammogram is normal, right? That means what? You never, you did not develop the cancer, right? But what is the importance of doing it? You are at high risk compared with the other female who are BRCA negative. So if you are doing the mammogram, if your BRCA is positive, if you are doing mammogram regularly, if the cancer develops or something develops, the biggest advantage is you develop, I mean, you, you picked up in a very, very early stage and in very early, early stage, detection. there is a, sorry? Early detection itself, early yeah, detection. Exactly, exactly, exactly. So early detection will help you uh, for a better result, cure forever and less treatment and less cost as well. So this is the advantage. So BRCA testing will give you idea right about the risk but it will not prevent so if you do the bracket test means now you are safe that now no more bracket test is positive or negative i will never develop the breast cancer it's not like that BRCA is the test which gives you the idea so what are the indication of bracket test anyone when to supposed to do the bracket test anyway i'm going little out of these things but it is again a breast cancer things and i don't want to miss you Anyone tell me what are the indication one, two, three, four, where you advise the patient, okay, you go and do the Baraka test. Family. First degree family relatives positive for Wonderful. breast cancer. This is the first degree positive. That is what the scenario is, first degree. So you, you first degree positive. So mother has breast cancer. Now daughter is asking, you can tell, okay, you go and check the Baraka. Why? And the, again, let me tell you, the, the hereditary cancers are 5%. Globally, huh? Five percent means ninety-five percent of the cancers are not he not hereditary, not inherited, not inherited. And this is what I'm seeing for last twenty years in my practice. So I ask every time the history, like what we family history, right? So who has a cancer in family? Father no, mother no, this no, brother no, son no, daughter no, aunt maternal, paternal no. So ninety percent has no family history. Only five percent has a family history or inherited. Means what? Getting from mother to baby father to baby, father to boy, father to brother, blah, blah, right? So this is an inherited 5%, just for your knowledge. But anyway, so first degree relative, they are increased at the risk of developing the inherited cancer, which is supposed to be 5% statistically from mother to baby. So this is a one category where you advise you go and check the BRCA. What second category? Anyone? So triple negative breast cancer, triple negative breast cancer, 
breast cancer who has er negative estrogen negative progesterone, progesterone. receptor negative and her2 human epithelial receptor type 2 new if this three negative tnbc they are at high risk it is you recommend braca again this category female younger age female who develop the breast cancer in a younger age probably they carry the braca gene so you advise them for doing the braca one and two so these are the few subsets of the patients where you supposed to guide them for braca doing the braca testing you cannot tell everyone each and everybody that oh you go and do the braca test so these are the few subsets of the patients so your homework to go and read the braca testing are you happy with the homework yes or no this is the exam question no? don't take it lightly braca is exam hot favorite exam question dha had moh and all are you okay with the homework yes or no yes sir yes sir yes, wonderful sir. so so homework is to read the braca i give you the idea brief idea again go and read it braca testing given good in uh, master the board usmle as well as there are a lot of literature if you google it there are hundreds of articles will open up with braca second thing is dietary modification will not going to change the risk or it will not prevent her2 testing is not prevent it will again give you the idea her2 positive negative why you want to do if her2 positive you have a one drug called trastuzumab you have one drug called pertuzumab i told you in the lung cancer right so trastuzumab and pertuzumab can be offered to the patient who has her2 we'll discuss in next sunday in detail in onco right but her2 positive is a test right braca is the test so doing just testing will not prevent the cancer by doing something aromatase inhibitor yes so by giving the anti hormonal treatment either anastrozole or letrozole or tamoxifen citrate to the patient means mother has a breast cancer 60 years of age like uh, now daughter is a 40 years asking how i can prevent the breast cancer in first degree relative give the baby give the daughter of the mother right who has no cancer mother has cancer the daughter has no cancer so give the daughter tamoxifen for 5 years it significantly about 60% chances in reduction of developing the breast cancer to the daughter right and this is the real answer so erpr testing will not erpr will give you idea about right so testing is not treating will reduce the cancer is that clear so like one question again pre diabetic and diabetic my father has a diabetic i am pre diabetic my hb1c is borderline say say for example my hb1c is 6.2 hba1c i am pre diabetic i am not a diabetic i am not a normal i am pre diabetic so how i can prevent the diabetes to develop i start metformin that's it i start metformin that's it i do diet regular exercise so compared with diet modification and aromatase inhibitor aromatase inhibitor has a proven track record so just by dietary modification stopping you cannot stop the cancer but by taking the things selective estrogen receptor modulator SERMS that is tamoxifen raloxifen and aromazate inhibitor result in 50 to 66% reduction in the breast cancer compared with the placebo the benefit is greater those with the two first degree relative with the breast cancer mother or sister so if the mother has a breast cancer sister has a breast cancer and you give the uh, to the daughter it reduces from 50 to 66% of the reduction of getting the breast cancer dietary modification is not proven so far and her2 and erpr is just the testing it will not prevent so that's all for my talk four of out of four is a good score are we going well yes or no yes sir great yes hope nobody is sleeping huh i am just curious why don't you start your uh, video not mandatory don't take it otherwise but i would happy and at least i know who is there right and i can recognize i know each and everybody but if somebody meets me in face to face i cannot recognize cage questions are for alcohol dependence cage c a g cage questions have you heard of cage who has not heard of cage question and yes or no tell me who has not heard of cage cage question and no sir who oh. Sumi, hello. Sumi, you told no. Okay, that means everybody knows the cage questionnaire, right? So cage questionnaire, what this cage stands for? C A G. What's the cage stands for? So cage stands for cut down. C A G E. 
it's a first letter of all c means cut down a for angry g for guilt and e for eye opener c for cut down a for absence g for guilt e for emotional c for cut down a for agitation g for guilt and e for unethical none of the above all of the above you feel that today's questions Option are a. yeah most of the people think the questions today's are very toxic isn't it but it's very common don't miss out just let's see what other people a b c d yes yes nilam dr nilam yes sir Sorry to target you today. <laughs> no, sir. Probably I'm a not good person for you today. <laughs> you don't like me. I know you don't like me. <laughs> no, sir. Not like that. Uh, uh, okay. H stands for uh, cut, cut, annoyed, guilty, and I. Um, so what's your answer? Basically, you? it's a tool uh, to assess uh, the alcohol uh, alcoholism, basically. So what's the answer? Finally, what's the answer? So actually, annoyed and angry. Angry, I was confused because A is mentioning angry, but uh, so 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 so, so make make your life bit more easy. Angry slash annoy. <laughs> That's why I mentioned uh, I wrote none of the above because no no a, no no yeah. a, for in first option cut down angry or annoy both are same thing angry annoy basically. It is the answer. Then what what's the answer? A is the answer. And if angry is only there like this, then what is the answer? <laughs> yeah, I would then, I, then again, my sister hits the A answer. No, why you are getting confused? Angry and I am telling you the same thing. No? So okay. then why you are get confused? So A is the answer. Be confident. You know everything, but you are what what I observed in you is don't take it as a, it's a feedback from me. Always okay. you, you come to A, B, C, D, you are very clear that these are three not answers. But these two, you getting confused by your own. Right. You're getting confused by your own and end of the day, in spite of knowing the answer, you're taking the wrong answer. This is what I, I mean, so, generally interpreted. Well taken, that, sir. Sorry? Noted, sir. Noted, sir. Well taken. Great. Wonderful. So, angry and annoy is the same thing. So, don't get confused. The answer is A. So, now, what's the importance, you tell me, the uh, of cage, answer, cage questionnaire? What's the importance? So, some alcoholic is there. You ask you ask the these questions, right? So, what's the importance of this of cage questionnaire? It's a screening tool, sir. Um, to so assess. What you, uh, great, issues. wonderful. So, it's a screening tool. So, what you want to screen after uh, asking the cage questionnaire? What's the importance? You ask the cage questionnaire. Patient says yes, 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 all yes. You patient feels that I want to cut down yes. He becomes agitated yes. He feels guilty yes, and it's a eye opener for him yes. Then what's the importance? Uh, it uh, it gives an assessment uh, basically to the uh, person. Mm -hmm. It is a self assessment tool basically. So, okay. So by assessing the tools, what we are going to prove, or is there any uh, medicinal or pharmaceutical implication on this questionnaire, or it just the what exactly? I mean, you understand my question? Mm -hmm. By asking the cage to the questionnaire to the patient right or yeah. self assessment are we going to intervene because there is some logic na otherwise yeah. why we do all cage questionnaire and all blah blah to this patient are we going to intervene something by asking this anyway yeah. so don't worry so this is what the thing is alcoholism or alcohol dependence alcoholism just for your knowledge little literature alcoholism is a self diagnosed uh, disease. Al alcoholism is not defined as an amount of the alcohol use. Means somebody is taking too much alcohol is alcoholic. Not like that. It is not defined as alcohol use leading to loss of the employment. Right. So if he is not going to job, job nahi ja hai, alcoholic hai. It's not like that. Many alcoholics still maintain their job. So they take alcohol, they go job. Right. So so this is the thing. The cage question in the first let cage ask the cage question and do they feel the need to cut down the amount they are thinking answer is yes or no right if yes score is one if no score is zero for your knowledge nilam are you getting me yes, do sir. they feel angry or annoyed see angry or annoyed 
when asked about the drinking yes or no they angry they may not angry they are annoyed they may not anger annoy angry annoy is one no zero do they feel guilt about the amount they drink yes or no yes one no zero and do they feel the need for a morning eye opener yes or no yes one zero the cage questionnaire are excellent at helping the patient recognize they are alcohol dependent or not and this is the chart cage questionnaire for detecting the alcoholism questions have you ever felt you should cease c stands for cut down your drinking yes one same thing annoyed guilt and this see below the last box a total score of 0 1 so either all 0 1 right so patient or you can put a score right so lowest score is 0 highest is 4 so 0 or 1 low risk right for drinking 2 and 3 is a little high risk and 4 is absolutely very very high risk and it is like a diagnostic for alcoholism right so this is what the importance is that you must know so every alcohol second questions nilam can you tell me what is the difference between i mean how you treat the alcohol dependence and alcohol withdrawal this question is for you so no, say sir, for example alcohol dependence and alcohol withdrawal so one patient comes to you with alcohol dependence are you going to advise some pharmacological treatment to him and one patient comes to you with alcohol withdrawal symptoms are you going to prescribe something to him are you getting my question yes or no yes yes sir yes got it clear so if you don't know it's your homework alcoholism yes. is a global problem again right so you need to know everybody needs to know anyone 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 in the house wants to answer alcohol dependence and alcohol withdrawal yes bahar toprak azil onsia फंक्शनल यू हैव टू डिपेंड ऑन एल्कोहल कंजम्पन Mm-hmm. Okay. And what's alcohol withdrawal symptoms? After stopping the intake of alcohol, the patient shows some symptoms, which might include even seizures. Or okay. So how you manage? You manage the both the patient in the same way, or you manage both the patients in a different way? No, sir. For alcohol withdrawal, we can start them with uh, prophylactic. Uh, anti convulsants diazepam okay yeah. great so withdrawal is a diazepam yes sir okay and dependence disulfiram fine homework very very frequently asked questions in exam benzodiazepine are the main stay of the treatment in alcohol withdrawal as you rightly said benzodiazepines are safe effective and preferred treatment of uh, alcohol withdrawal symptoms Benzodiazepines are cross tolerant with alcohol and modulate the anxiolytic by stimulating blah blah. That's fine. No need to remember. Just therapeutic. You need to know. Naltrexone. Naltrexone, a most newly diagnosed patient with moderate to severe alcohol use disorder. We suggest initial treatment with naltrexone, and naltrexone is our preferred choice due to the preferable dosing schedule. an ability to begin treatment for alcohol use disorder with the individual still drinking naltrexone is used to help narcotic dependents who have stopped taking narcotics to use drug free it is also used to help alcoholic stay alcohol free now tell me nilam what is the difference between naltrexone and naloxone nilam yes sir what is the difference between naloxone and naltrexone isn't it it's a different drug what do you think or same drug uh, no sir different different drug sir yeah so now you tell me where we is supposed to use naltrexone and where we supposed to use naloxone yeah ethanol toxicity is naloxone which toxicity ethanol ethanoid ethanol ethanol 
what is ethanol type of alcohol no no nilam uh, i yes, think sir. you little get confused i am talking about naloxone this is naltroxone in front of your skin. I'm asking oh, about naloxone. Tongue, tongue, tongue therapy, sir. Yeah, so tongue, is an opioid antagonist, sir. Opioid antagonist. So opioid antagonist is a naloxone, right? So here I got one excellent slide: naltroxone versus naloxone. So what is naloxone? So it's a long-acting drug. Naloxone is a short-acting drug. Simple. This is one difference, right? Number two. Uh, naltroxone used for the control of craving for several substance including alcohol craving is what desired intense desired if they don't drink they become psycho they become withdrawal symptom they become panic you understand right so strong desire either for tobacco or alcohol right so what's the use of the naltroxone used for the control of craving for several substance including tobacco alcohol and naltroxone used for the opioid only. Opioid only opioid. What are the opioid? Can you name the drug opioid? One drug name opioid very quickly. Heroin. Before that, common morphine. Morphine is yeah. opioid or not? <laughs> morphine. Yes, yes so morphine yeah. is opioid, right? So we call it as an opioid analgesic. That is a morphine, isn't it? We used every day in our cancer patients because of the severe pain, right? So opioid. So, if you have opioid overdose, naloxone is the antidote, isn't it? Nilam. Yeah. Right? So, this is what the thing is, right? So, you must know, you must yes. know naloxone and naltroxone. Though it's a pharmac knowledge, but it's important. 5 of 5 is excellent score. Next question. 19-year-old woman broke her femur three days ago during a soccer college uh, football match. This morning, her mother brought her to the ED, that is emergency department, because she was short of breath. Physical examination reveals a confused patient who is awake but not alert and oriented. And splotchy magneta rash around the base of the neck and the back. ABG, that is arterial blood gas, reveals PO2 under 60. What is the most likely diagnosis? Fat embolism, myocardial infarctions, pancreatitis, rhabdomyolysis. So again, I didn't draw the triad today for quite long so let me draw the triad any mcq this is mcq is in the center you without knowing the diagnosis without knowing the investigation you cannot jump on the treatment what they ask is the diagnosis so make some diagnosis then we'll discuss treatment as well great Yes, Azil. Tell me, what is this? Sir, uh, the diagnosis is fat embolism because there is history of uh, fracture femur. Okay. okay. So, what point favoring the... Let me ask you the other way around. What, what are the positive things which, uh, I mean, which brings to our notice that, sir, this is fat embolism. So, what are the things? Tell me one by one. From the shortness scenario. of breath. So shortness of breath. Where is the shortness of breath? She was short of breath. One minute. Short of breath. So short of breath. This is one thing. Okay. What else? And even the rash. Confusion. A rash. So this is a rash. So this is a rash is second. Okay. What else? Confusion. But not a lot of oriented. Confusion. So confusion. Not a lot of confusion. Above to rash. Above to rash. Okay. So confusion. What else? So what is, do you hypoxia. know? What is, the, what is the hypoxia? So hypoxia. Fair enough. Okay. Hypoxia. No problem. Do you know what is the triad in the fat embolism? As in, there is one triad in the fat embolism. No, I don't know, sir. You don't know the triad? Yes, uh, like tachypenic, uh, tachycardia. Okay. And so now see, this is 
let me share the screen again. I'm stopping this uh, screen share. Just wait for one minute. Great. So everybody is very well clear now. Okay. okay. So let's see. This is the triad. Azil. Okay, sir. This is the triad. You must know and read it the fat embolism once again. Huh? Long bone or pelvic <laughs> fracture. This is in the history. All right. Fat globules entering into this. This is pathology. It's a very nice picture. I got it. So you will understand better understand. So if you see the scenario, there is a there is a femur or long bone fracture. Femur is a long bone, right? So long bone fracture with the match, soccer match. So what happens? Long bone pelvic fracture. What happens? Because of the fracture, fat globules entering into the circulation. Fat globule. Remember fat globule. Huh? Fat globule is entering into the circulation. So after one to three days, what happens? There are three things will happen. One is hypoxia, which is there. ABG, you can see the hypoxia. PaO2 is less. So it's a hypoxia. Neurological abnormalities, whether it is a confusion, whether it is a disorientation, whether it is a coma or seizure, right? And patechial rest. So everything is there in this scenario. This is classically fits the scenario. So now you go back to the scenario. Now you recollect the everything, right? 19 year old. So now again, why it is not myocardial infarction, number one, right? We need to rule out other things as well, right? not just the uh, things. Myocardial infarction, what again? 19 years of age usually don't happen. There is no history of chest pain. ECG is not given. Enzymes are not given. Not fitting myocardial infarction. Am I right or wrong? At least tell me yes or no. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So yes. This is yes, this is gone. What is a pancreatitis? So pancreatitis again 19 years of age. Pancreatitis is not there. Pancreatitis present with usually epigastric pain. Amylase and lipase are increased. CT scan, you can see lots of necrosis and inflammations in these things. Nothing is there in the mansion. So pancreatitis is less likely. And rhabdomyolysis. So rhabdomyolysis is what? Rhabdomyolysis is because of major crush injury, right? Patient has a crush injury basically or long bone injury, right? So there is a rhabdomyolysis. So rhabdo, right? Skeletal muscle uh, rupture, lots of potassium release increased potassium in the plasma the thing this is exam question hyperkalemia kalemia means potassium calcemia means calcium so don't get confused i'm talking about kalemia potassium is increased patient if you don't read the hyperkalemia you can see in ecg there is a tall t wave have you heard of tall t wave yes or no peak t wave this yes. is normal ecg p q r s t this is normal tall t wave p q r s -T and tall T wave. This is tall T wave, hyperkalemia. Exam question, tall T wave, hyperkalemia, tall T wave. Is that clear? Yes or no? Right? So this is, yes. looks like a, so this is a classical case of fat embolism. So you should look for the triad. Whenever you answer in exam, the fat embolism, look for three things. Number one, long bone injury is there or not? Yes, it is there. Three things. Hypoxia is there? Yes, there. Rash is there? Yes, there. Neurological involvement, is there? Yes, there. It's fat embolism. That's it. Is that clear? Yes or no? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. Wonderful. 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 So this is very interesting picture. I got it from net. So read it later on. I'll share the PowerPoint. Not going much in detail. So this is tried. Seven questions. Six of, out of six is a brilliant score. Six, four out of six is not or less than four is not good score. 18 year old man hit by a car while riding his bicycle. So somebody by riding the bicycle, 18 year young boy, right, hit by the car. He present to the emergency department with severe groin pain after falling on the central bar of the bike. Physical examination revealed a blood at the urethral meatus, a high riding prostate. What is the most appropriate next step in the management? Foley's catheter. Get a retrourethrogram, retrograde urethrogram, do the empiric antibiotic, do the CBC and electrolyte, discharge the patient with the reassurance, don't need to worry, you go home. Retrograde urethrogram, sir. Okay, let's see what other experts are saying. Great. Thanks for your answer. So, 
So who is this? Who I mean, your name? Sorry. Tamim sir. Tamim, great wonder. Fine. So let's see what other people are saying. We are fifty people in the class. So let's see. I got only five answers. Still forty-five are thinking. Give five ten more seconds. Nilam post answer. Post it, sir. Great, wonderful. What's your answer? Sir B. B get a retrograde urethrogram. So first of all, tell me what is a retrograde urethrogram. What exactly you do in retrograde urethrogram? Describe me you know, whatever is in your mind. There is a something is in your mind. No, for uh, retrograde. Basically, uh, used uh, like uh, in case of any trauma to the urethra. Hmm. Uh, to, like, so. so how you do? Basically, what you do in retrograde urethrogram? You taking some pictures or you do some USG? You do IVP? You do CT scan? You inject dye? You do something else? You do PET scan? What you do in retrograde urethrogram? Uh, basically, sir, uh, it's a um, contrast uh, is uh, injected to the injected from where IV or urethra or where from which root? Probably you never thought of such silly questions, isn't it? So read, go and read the retrograde urethrogram. Answer is correct, but I want you to understand, not the mug up. You understand? Mm -hmm. Today, go and read and put me personally after reading some literature to my WhatsApp. Yes. Sir. I read it and this is the literature. I don't want to the waste whole the Sunday. Just yes. get the basic idea. See, whatever we answer, we need to have some clarity in our mind eh? that what we are answering, right? And what does it mean really? Then you will enjoy more. You understand? So it's not just shake of giving the answer, right? So we need to know ourselves. If I don't know anything, I go and read it, right? I cannot present this PowerPoint just, I mean, I'm enjoying and I'm just sitting in front of you. I do a lot of exercise after, before presenting it to you. You understand? Mm -hmm. Anyway, so your answer is a retrograde. What do you think? What, where is the problem? Why there is a, there is a blood at the urethral meatus and prostate is going high? Where is the exact problem? It's in the bladder, it's in the prostate, it's in the urethra or somewhere. At what level the problem is? I told you, problem at kidney, problem at ureter, problem at bladder, problem at prostate, or problem at urethra. Five things Ure I told you. Urethra. urethra. Okay, urethra. So what happens to urethra? Urethra is get ruptured, right? basically. See what happens. This, when there is a bang with the car, right? They say that there is a severe groin pain, right? Falling on the central bar of the bike. Bike means cycle, bicycle, right? So when he put, right, there is a one rod, right? While we are driving, there is a central rod connecting from front and back area, right? So when he fall, right, maybe the urethral part is very close. So urethra gets ruptured and when the urethra cuts off, prostate will go a little high. And there is a, because of the urethral injury, there is a blood at the urethral meatus, means the opening of the urethra at the glance of the penis to the boy, right? So there is a blood meatus. So that is again suggested there is something wrong or urethra is gets injured, then why you don't want to do the police catheter, doctor? Tell me. Why why you don't want to do the police catheter? Nilam, urethra is ruptured, right? So you do the go and go. Sorry. Not painful in retrograde urethra. No, no. My question to you, Nilam, is that that retrograde urethrogram, why you want to do, why you don't want to place directly the police catheter to this patient. If you put first police catheter, what happened? So meatus is already ruptured. I mean, well, you can't insert a folic catheter. Okay, so by doing the retrograde urethrogram, we can able to enter the catheter? You got the question? No, sir. No, sir. We can, we, for retrograde urethrogram, we will Look the patency of the waves. If it will be or the dyes will be constructed or it will be in the perineal regions. So now we should go for the suprapubic uh, insertion. We not go for the police catheter. 
Great. So basically, by doing the retrograde urethrogram, you are injecting some dye into the urethra, right? And you yes, are sir. getting the picture of urethral tract from penile urethra, prostatic urethra, various part of the urethra, isn't it? I'm not going much in detail of anatomy of urethra now, but you go and read it. It's interesting. So, so what happens when the urethra gets ruptured? It is a complete rupture. It is a partial rupture. You don't know. You don't know, right? So by doing the urethrogram, you get the exactly the track, number one. Number two, you get partial versus complete urethral things, right? And sometimes, as you rightly said, first you try the police catheter. First you try the police catheter. But if the complete rupture, you cannot enter the police catheter, the next option for you is the suprapubic catheter, right? So at this time, empiric antibiotic CBC and all is all later stage. But the most important thing is to do the retrograde urethrogram. And after that, you try for the Foley's catheter. The patient has a urethral disruption that needs to be evaluated. So patient's urethra is ruptured. What disruption? A kidney ureter, bladder or KUB X-ray followed by retrograde urethrogram must be conducted prior to any other test. Placing a Foley's catheter without such an imaging modality can lead to a further urethral damage. And that is the concern. Nilam. Right? So, you need to know how much urethra is damaged and how do you get to know by urethrogram. Once you do, then you attempt. The step after urethrogram is a Foley's catheter placement to help the urination, right? And the role of the antibiotic is then fine. I mean, there is no role of antibiotic for trauma without evidence of infection. So, that's okay. You got the idea, Dr. Nilam? Yes or no? Yes, sir. So, whenever common questions commonly injured. I've seen plenty of, of patients like such in my residency while I was very junior doctor in emergency room. A lot of road traffic accident, these things. We do retro urethrogram and we try to pu pu put a Foley's catheter. If not, then suprapubic. That's it. So this is, you want to exactly know the anatomy of the urethra. That's it. So next questions, last couple of bear with me. Which of the following is the most appropriate screening test for aortic aneurysm? Every one age more than 50 with CT angiogram, men who have smoked age more than 65 with ultrasound, everyone more than 50 with ultrasound, everyone with more than 65 with ultrasound and men with more than 65 with ultrasound. No easy question, but important. D. D for ball. Okay, great. Most important is smoker. Sorry? Most important is smoker. Is smoker. Smoker. Okay, great. Let's see. Other experts, there are a lot of experts. So who, who will be the volunteer? Because I have more couple of questions along with this. Any reason? Anyone wants to be a volunteer to discuss a little bit about aortic aneurysm? Yes, Toprak. <clears throat> Are you ready? Yeah, it's important aortic aneurysm. Risk of a smoker. Uh, does it matter age or gene is important just smoker <laughs> smoker so uh, so what's your answer B man who ever smoked and age yes. is more than yeah, 65 B. so what are the modalities of at, uh, how you screen them so some 65 smoker comes to you which test you do so ultrasound or CT scan or PET CT scan or what do you do what is the best no, ultrasound. test ultrasound Great ones, ultrasound. Ultrasound, you found that there is a 5.5 centimeter, 5.5 centimeter aneurysm at aorta, abdominal aorta. How you treat this patient? Second question in exam. One is you diagnose with ultrasound more than 65 smoker. One question in exam. Second question, once you diagnosed, right, you by the ultrasound and now on ultrasound, they found to have size of Aortic aneurysm is 5.7 centimeter. What's your management?
ವೇಸ್ಟ್ ಒಬ್ರ ಟ್ರೀಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ವೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ಮೆಡಿಕಲ್ ಟ್ರೀಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ವೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ಸರ್ಜಿಕಲ್ ಟ್ರೀಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದರ್ ಎನಿ ಆರ್ಬಿಟ್ರಿ ಲೈನ್ ಕಟ್ ಲೈನ್ ಕಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಲೈನ್ ವೇರ್ ಯು ವೇರ್ ಯು ಟ್ರೀಟ್ ಓಕೆ ಸರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಟೂ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಫೈವ್ ಡೋಂಟ್ ನೀಡ್ ಟು ಆಪರೇಟ್ ಮಾನಿಟರ್ ಓಕೆ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ತ್ರೀ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಫೈವ್ ಟು ಫೈವ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಫೈವ್ ಮಾನಿಟರ್ ಮೋರ್ ದನ್ ಫೈವ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಫೈವ್ ಆಪರೇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದರ್ ಎನಿ ಗೈಡ್ ಲೈನ್ ಎಸ್ ಆರ್ ನೋ ಡು ಯು ನೋ ಎಸ್ ಆರ್ ನೋ i think more than 5 you have to surgically repair it fair enough so let's see this is what the basic thing is this is you need to know it's not just the matter of mug up this is the normal right so this is a aorta i try to get the picture right so this is aorta this is normal picture abdominal aorta this is normal here you can see there is a ballooning of the aorta that is called aneurysm so this is really the aneurysm do you appreciate the pictures what i'm drawing on my screen yes or no yes so this is triple a abdominal aortic aneurysm very common especially smoker especially more than 65 the modality is ultrasound or usg this three key important work smoker 65 usg you must screen every male who ever smoked more than 65 you do the ultrasound abdomen just to know the aneurysm all right this is the treatment this is the treatment it is a guideline i got it from the book everything is i got it from book i do a lot of reading and exercise before coming to you every sunday so management of triple a is based on the size of the lesion size not the site size of the lesion 3 to 4 cm what's the guideline ultrasound you do 3 to 4 cm every 2 2 yearly you do ultrasound just monitor it 4 to 4.5 cm ultrasound or ct scan is little closer from 2 years to 6 month and more than 5.5 irrespective whether they have symptoms or no symptoms surgical repair obviously symptomatic you have to open because symptoms means a rupture of the aneurysm there is a intra abdominal bleeding when aorta rupture patient may present in the shock or sometimes they may die because of hypovolemic shock massive hemorrhage inside the abdominal cavity that is why you need to screen them 65 male ever smoked usg if it is 3 to 4 mug up these numbers are very important they can ask 4 cm size what you do 5 cm what you do 6 cm so you need to mug up this three line 3 to 4 cm 2 to 3 years all up 4 to 4.5, 6 monthly follow-up, more than 5, open it up. That's it. Don't need to wait for rupture. You don't need to wait for rupture. You open up. Is that clear, everyone? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Wonderful. Yes, sir. Next, last yes. couple of yes, questions. 67-year-old man comes to the ED. Though it's a simple question. It's not very difficult questions. But sometimes we missed it. So they ask you the easier questions as well. Don't take it otherwise that every time they ask the toxic question in exam, they ask you the easier one. So 70% is easy, 30% is toxic. So we have to concentrate on both easy and toxic. Got it. So this is by my sense, it's easy, but we need to specifically know the number. 3 to 4 watt, 4 to 5.4 watt, anything more than 5.5 is watt. That's it. That is my goal to make you remember these numbers as well. 67 year old man comes to the ed that is emergency department with a sudden onset of chest pain he also has pain between his scapula he has a history of hypertension tobacco smoking blood pressure is 169 over 108 what is the most accurate test mra magnetic resonance angiogram trans esophageal echogram trans thoracic echogram uh, sorry echocardiogram ct angiogram or conventional angiogram Again, my triad will come here. Again, my triad will come here. What's the triad? So, triad is the simple triad. What's the diagnosis? What's the investigations? What's the treatment? So, triad will help you. So, you first of all, you make a diagnosis. What this condition is? How you investigate this condition? And if at all they ask you treatment, what's the treatment? Uh, diagnosis the iotic dissection uh, let's see dr soheb ahmed m would you like to make some comments sir i 
want new guys. Dr. Roshan, any comments, sir, from your side, Dr. Roshan? Yes, sir. Uh, I think it's uh, aortic aneurysm. Uh, aortic aneurysms. So what point yes. favoring aortic aneurysm in this patient by history? How do you get to know? I mean, just trying to understand. Yeah, uh, the uh, first thing is onset of pain and uh, in, in between the scapula and history of hypertension and tobacco smoking uh, favors uh, aortic aneurysm. So basic investigation, that's a diagnosis. Investigation was basic investigation, the ultrasound, uh, uh, trans, uh, esophageal ultrasound scan and more accurately CT angiogram. That's what I think, sir. So surgical uh, the treatment is as we discussed in the previous uh, question. Okay. Okay, so so just one more. You you explain excellently well. I'm very happy, but just I want to understand more from you. That uh, what do you think the the questions important here? What is the most accurate test? So what do you think? What could be the most accurate amongst this test? Most accurate. The I think is, so. C yeah, uh, the most accurate is a, a CT angiogram, I suppose. Okay, why not angiogram? Why not E? E is angiogram. Why CT angiogram? Which is more sensitive and specific? CT angiogram or conventional angiogram? Uh, Hello? CT angiogram gives you the more accurate, uh, precise location of the surrounding as well. Uh, so you can have a... So angiogram uh, cannot give the precise... Angiogram convention. Angiogram gives use. a yeah. So angiogram gives a precise uh, uh, location, uh, the identification of the vessels itself, not the surrounding. So CT will give us uh, substantial relationship with other uh, surrounding tissues as well. Fine. So, uh, and the lymph nodes as well. So. So why you I want to know why, why why you want to know the lymph nodes in this case mm -hmm. while you are suspecting aortic aneurysm or aortic rupture? I guess. Right, so why you want to know the lymph nodes in this patient? Are you suspecting some malignancy in this patient? Uh, no, sir, just uh, since... Uh, I'm just trying to understand. Get... Huh? This is just the discussion purpose. Yeah. So we get uh, no, more sir, no. uh, yeah. Since you're going to open up for surgery, so better to be beforehand know the what are going to operate at. So... So, so if you don't mind, can you do one homework today and yes, try sir. to find out what is a more sensitive and specific CT angiogram or conventional angiogram? What are the advantage and disadvantage of both the procedure? Yeah, are you okay? Uh, yeah. Are yes, you okay sir. with CT this? Angiogram, yeah, sure thing. Yeah, CT angiograms gives you more uh, but radiological uh, hazards compared to the uh, angiogram. So fair enough. I mean, but the but, advantage, yeah. Fine, fair enough. But the answer is angiogram. So let's let's okay, we'll, we'll, we'll well we'll do the more research on it probably. Right. So it's a learning. No? It's a learning for us. Everyone's. I'm also learning. Right. <laughs> so it's a learning for us. Yes, Nilam. Why Why did you think angiogram? Sorry, Stelling City angiogram, Nilam. Your answer is, I think, angiogram E. You posted E. Sir, in our, because uh, it's a ruptured, uh, so we can... Uh, How do we it know it's a ruptured? So that is sudden onset of chest pain. Okay. So and that is, is uh, one point favoring. Sudden onset of chest pain. Right. And what is the other thing? Clue? Hypertension, tobacco smoking. Great. Second thing, that is a predisposing, basically. The risk factor is also there. Age and, is is there also. A, and is there any importance pain between the scapula? Yes, sir. So, always remember, this is specific word. When there is a pain between the scapula, whenever it comes to your examiner, until proved otherwise considered, two things. Right? One is a ruptured aortic aneurysm. Right? And second is esophageal rupture. Got it. Ruptured okay. aorta or ruptured esophagus. Mainly the ruptured uh, yes, this, uh, yes, uh, yes, yeah, ruptured aorta. Right. So this is classical clue. They yes, give usually I, I I solved so far, honestly speaking, more than ten thousand MCQ so far in last ten years, discussing and producing and presenting. So this word is always there when there is the aortic aneurysm or aortic aneurysm rupture. Especially in a thoracic aorta, there is a scapula, pain between scapula, right? So if I ask you, Nilam, if I, the right. question is change, here the, yes. here the question is change. Say, for example, what is the best, I remove this word, what is the 
best initial test if my question is this best initial test what would be the answer this is one question second question is best most accurate this is what the question is right in this scenario they ask most accurate so dr khan told uh, chest x ray and that is the correct answer so initial test is x ray x ray is the initial test what happens let me tell you this is this is chest right this is heart right and both the side there is a lung this is lung part right in between lung there is a heart okay so what happens when there is a aorta ruptured there is a mediastinal widening this is called media because the blood gets accumulated in the mediastinum so there is a mediastinal widening and that can be very early picked up on the x ray so if you want to do immediately something right because angiogram or ct angiogram will not be accessible to each and every hospital number 1 number 2 it, the expert may may not be available but x ray is available so what is the if they ask you what is the most initial test immediately you want to do x ray what you will going to see in a rupture in aortic aneurysm is mediastinal widening that is the most important word mediastinal widening which you can see and if you see the mediastinal widening on the x ray your diagnosis is 99% it is confirmed that it is aortic rupture right or aneurysmal rupture of thoracic aorta and you immediately go for the angiogram is that clear nilam yes sir great so initial test yes, keep, keep a watch on this so if what they ask if they ask initial test answer is x-ray if they ask most accurate test angiogram nilam i want to understand from you again one minute sir i'll get back to you i i heard your uh, comment i'll coming to you why you want to do why you don't want to do the ct angiogram and you'd want to do the angiogram the sir told earlier that ct angiogram based blah blah surrounding structure we can see lymph nodes up frontly beforehand going entering or opening the thorax we need to know what do you think uh, sir uh, because uh, there is a rupture there is a need uh, to uh, uh, intervene surgically or uh, put a stent or graft so in angiogram uh, if you are doing then we, we can do it simultaneously excellent excellent this is what i want to hear because simon a ct angiogram is what basically ct angiogram right you go it's a very interesting upcoming new investigation by and large it is not ct angiogram means ct scan you do and you inject iv dye or iv contrast into the vein and you take a picture and you do the ct scan that is called ct angiogram you are interested in the vessels of the chest ct chest angiogram means ct scan angiogram you are visualizing the chest right but it is from the outside it is from the outside say for example there is a block there is a bleeding in ct angiogram what will you do you cannot do anything it's a diagnostic tools this is a investigation this is investigational tool angiogram is investigation plus treatment if you want to make some stent bleeding you want to stop you want to do it you do with the same catheter what we called as a pca percutaneous coronary intervention right or you do some stent or whatever the things you want to put inject insert coagulate you can do it through the same thing same procedure so it's a diagnostic as well as therapeutic and it is just the diagnostic you can just diagnose the things you cannot treat by ct angiogram this is what i understood right so we can go through more literature and probably we can get the bring more clarity right but angiogram conventional is always 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 better than ct angiogram that is a bottom line take home message because it has a more sensitivity and more specificity city of the angiogram versus ct angiogram number one that is why it's an investigation of choice but if somebody tells me okay say for example myself if i want to say my heart is block or, i mean i have coronary block or not i probably go initially with the ct angiogram just to get little idea okay fine how much is block where is the block block is there or not but eventually if i find a block on the ct angiogram i want to go for angiogram why because i want to enter the catheter i want to dilate the vessel i want to do angioplasty i want to put drug eluting stent blah blah right so eventually the angiogram is the more sensitive and specific but it is invasive there is a very very rare risk of mortality angiogram is little dangerous than ct angiogram but still date people who are going for coronary artery disease or uh, or coronary vascular disease right still they are going for conventional angiogram right ct angiogram is a screening test 
is that clear so we will we'll discuss bit more considering the time yes sir you were commenting something i stopped you sorry so if the uh, if it the uh, aneurysm is ruptured sir will the patient will be having the same blood pressure yeah it's possible no when the rupture when the see hypertension is a risk factor tobacco is a risk factor got it so it does not mean every time you patient present in emergency room with a shock you understand <laughs> right hypertension it's not mandatory it's not mandatory you got it acute myocardial infarction patient may present with 170 over 100 bp isn't it it's not every time they present in cardiac shock or vtvf or all blah blah you got the point yes i got it yes. okay so uh, that's all so let me cover the last questions let me go last one questions then i'll skip one question 55 year old menopause female came to the came to you with the painless upper quadrant breast mass hard in feel no axillary lymph node palpable bilateral mammogram was done one mammogram normal one showing this exactly show below picture right what is the best next step in the management so you have a 55 year post menopausal upper outer quadrant pain less mass felt to the female underwent for bilateral mammogram one mammogram normal another opposite mammogram showing exactly this picture now they are asking what is the best next step in the management through cut biopsy fnsc pat ct scan mri bone scan Yes. Yes, Dr. Khan, any comment? Suresh Kumar, sir, any comment? Dr. Ajdani, any comment? Dr. Neelam, any comment? So the uh, uh, easiest way, uh, basically, it, since uh, there is no uh, axillary palpable node and uh, it is painless, it's hard, uh, we can go for FNSC, sir. Why because not biopsy? True cut. Yeah, I mean, my question is, why not you don't want to go for biopsy? Or is there any advantage of FNSC over biopsy? Uh, FNSC, uh, it is uh, less, in, uh, uh, it is easier and uh, it is painless. Uh, it is, uh, and it gives a, uh, but in the but in the question, what is the last line? Can you read it? What is the last line in MCQ? What's the best step in management? What is the best next step in the management? So what do you think? What is the best? FNS is best or true cut is best? Or doing some scan is the best? What is biopsy? So, most probably. Most probably biopsy. Yeah, that's the answer. Absolutely. That's the answer. So, Nilam, tell me, uh, what what is the problem in this mammogram? What do you see? They will now, a days, just for your knowledge, everybody, we are still 45 people in class. They ask lots of pictures. They ask lots of mammogram. They ask lots of sonography. They ask lots of CPD. They ask lots of things. So, don't ignore X-ray, sonogram, mammogram. You try to just cultivate the practice of looking towards it a little bit. So you won't get surprised in exam. That is why I'm putting, I'm a fan of pictures. So if you can see in my every lecture, there are lots of pictures. Why picture? Because it brings more clarity by my sense. And they ask as well, not just for understanding, they ask as well. Yes, yes, Nilam. So yes. can you can you tell me what is the difference between FNSC and biopsy? Mm, FNSC, uh, sir, it's uh, easier. Uh, 
high needle aspiration cytology that is uh, done to uh, do a histopathology uh, check. See, See so the... fine fine needle aspiration cytology is what? This is the breast. There is a lump upper outer quadrant. This is axilla. This is opposite breast. Just for understanding, right? Mm. So fine needle aspiration cytology. So this is the needle and this is the syringe of 2 ml, 5 ml, whatever the syringe. Just simple understanding. So what they, they entered into the breast, they take it the fluid part fine needle aspiration so you cannot aspirate solid you can aspirate only fluid right so here the fluid can be aspirated right after taking into the 2 ml 1 ml 0.5 ml what they will do they will put it on the slide right and do the reporting do the right. reporting this is simple understanding of fnse advantage and disadvantage advantage is what easy to do Anybody can do it. Very simple. Even you can do it at FNC. Yeah. Take a needle, fix the lump and remove it. Easy to do. Yeah. Almost all center you can do. Yeah. No much expert is required. This is the advantage. Yeah. Anybody can do. So no much expert. You don't need oncosurgeon. You don't need interventional radiologist. You don't need general surgeon to do it. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. So this is advantage the disadvantage this is fluid sample so on this test you cannot do ERP or HER2 is that clear yes or no yes sir ERP or HER2 can only be done by the biopsy hard tissue you need it number one mm -hmm. number two there is a false negative even though there is a malignancy you may sometimes miss because less cells are there in FNSE, you cannot see exact architecture of the breast comparatively with the breast biopsy. So here the false negative chance are less. Third, here the false positive is also high. False positive high and false negative is also high. Right? So this is less with the biopsy. Right? And sensitivity and specificity is less than biopsy. Here what you are seeing, you are detecting one cell out of 10,000 cells, say for example. And in biopsy, one abnormal cell out of one, one lakh cells or 100,000 cells. So which one is better? Screening one abnormal from 10,000 or from one lakh, one cell detecting is which one is more helpful, this or this? Biopsy, sir. Biopsy, because you have one lakh cells and you are finding one. Here you just find only 10,000. So you have high chance that you may miss the cancer, right? So if you have options between FNSE and biopsy, 100% select the biopsy. This is all advantage. You can do ERP yeah. or two chance of false positive negative. High, uh, you can see more uh, sensitivity and specificity of this test, right? That is why whenever you have options, don't and even after doing FNSE, say for example you did FNSE. FNS is positive. The report I also told uh, is an invasive ductal carcinoma, suggestive of invasive ductal carcinoma. Again, after diagnosis, you have to do the biopsy. Why? Because you want to do the ERP or HER2, right? Because it's a treatment. If ERP are positive, you give hormonal treatment. If HER2 positive, you give trastuzumab and pertuzumab, lung cancer. We discussed already. Is that clear? So this three test is mandatory. Every breast cancer across the globe, you need to do ERP and HER2 for each and every. So again, you do by FNSE, again, you do the biopsy. You are doing two procedure, two time cost, two time needle puncture, two time mental and physical trauma to the patient. Is that clear? So if you have upfront options of doing biopsy, you must go for the biopsy. It is the most sensitive and specific test. That's it. So this is called as a, right? So next step is a true cut biopsy and FNSE, select the true cut biopsy. You entered a gun and take the biopsy. This is a, looks like a pathological here. Uh, the things right so between these two select the true cut if true cut is not in option based is FNSE right but if both the things are in the option select the true cut once you confirm the diagnosis then you do the PET CT scan you do the bone scan you do the scan for the staging so these three things is for the staging not for the diagnosis right even if you say for example this patient did the PET scan PET scan is also showing there is upper outer quadrant band again you have to go for biopsy without biopsy you cannot diagnose anything as a cancer 
so biopsy is a mandatory 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 so first clinical suspicious biopsy and then staging and then treatment that's it so this is what how we do you got the idea nilam yes sir any doubt no sir that's all for today i think i spoke for 1 hour and 45 minutes hopefully you enjoy my lecture it's time for quick feedback those who joined first time i would be very glad to give some feedback anyone who joined first time yes sir i am joining for first time what's your name sir dr sekandar memon yes dr sekandar so how did you enjoy what's the new for you it was very useful and uh, very informative uh, i will definitely join next time on this great wonderful yes dr suruchi any comment from you dr suruchi giri probably still you are in the class yes sir yeah so it was comment? very informative class sir wonderful uh, covered almost many important topics okay great wonderful so i try my level best anyone lastly anyone volunteer last one more feedback anything new you you learned anyone sir uh, the questions were most of them were kind of new to me uh, who so is I... this who is this sorry ha this is yazil ha huh? yazil yeah tell me sorry Uh, so new questions are so uh, there were like more of now i know there is more of room to like where i have to study a lot so good exposure sir so it's a eye opener <laughs> kind of sir great wonderful no problem so great wonderful anyone else last so today no. also there were uh, many different topics uh, as azil mentioned uh, very new topics so yes uh, need to study a lot so it is good or bad good sir <laughs> great wonderful <laughs> yeah so i my question will never repeat believe me they will not done. even next time it all 10 12 different that is how we upgrade our knowledge na if i teach one thing at same time every time same same question you want it boring it boring for me rather than you it's boring for me every time we need to add something more pool of the questions and this all i need to do lot of juggling you understand collecting these things collecting literature pictures and many questions i prepared by my own because i am seeing lots of patients every day in my opd of breast cancer colon cancer lung cancer anemia leukemia lymphoma every day i am seeing so i try to create a scenario of my own patient if this comes how we manage if this comes how we manage if breast lump comes how we do right fna or biopsy you understand this all practical issues we need to understand right so let's see i mean we'll see you next uh, sunday with the hemato and oncology class it's exclusive hemato oncology there are lots of questions related with this so stay tuned stay stay connected with me and do let me know for your feedback i would be ha very happy even if you post the feedback in the group so we also get bit more motivated thank you very much and enjoy your sunday thank you very much for your time and your presence presence and uh, i'm very thankful that you listen me coolly and calmly thank you very much see you thank you sir thank, thank you sir thank you very much take care i'll share the powerpoint very soon right the whole lecture i'll share soon by evening thank you very much thank you thank you sir bye bye